Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about, I feel is the greatest Peter Pan animated adaption ever to be made. I truly feel like this captured the true essence of what Peter Pan should be like, what the Lost Boys should be like, what like Wendy and the whole entire like Darling family should be like. I truly feel like this is truly a lost treasure, a lost masterpiece. It is the best J.M. Barney adaption ever. And that Peter Pan and the Pirates, which aired on Fox Kids. It aired from the early 90s. I mean the early 90s. In fact, it came out in 1990 and lasted to 1991. It only sadly lasted for one season. But it had 65 episodes. If it was made in modern time, they would have split that up in a couple of sections. You know? This thing spawned its own video game. But sadly, it is not on DVD in America. It is in other countries. Um, there were some VHS's in America, but that's about it. For some reason, this show has never been, like, mentioned by most people. It's never been brought up. It's never been put on DVD in America. Like, nobody talks about this, and I don't understand why. When I mean this is great, I mean this is great. It is a million times better than the Disney animated movie. This is true, and I've, I've watched a couple other Peter Pan adaptions. I watched like the new modern one that's out. Um, I could not get into that to save my life. Like I just couldn't. Like I tried. It's the CGI one. I just couldn't get into that. Um, I don't. I think that's the only Peter Pan stuff I've ever watched cartoon wise. There have been some great Peter Pan adaptions, even in live action. Hook was great. The sci-fi Neverland was really good. That was more like a modern type take on Peter Pan with more like technology than um, magic, but it still had magic in it. Now, I think it was, what was it, 2003 or 2009? I can't remember which one. It was a live action Peter Pan movie just titled Peter Pan. And it stars Jason Isaacs as Hook. And that's the best live action adaption like ever. Now that one with, um, what's his Wolverine name dude, um, Hugh Jackman, I've never seen it, but I heard it's like dreadful, so yeah. And then there was that bizarre take on Peter Pan on Once Upon a Time in the third season, the first half of it. That's actually what caused me to stop liking that show, because the first half of the third season was when it really started to go downhill. That was like a terrible Peter Pan, it was a terrible Neverland, it was a terrible story arc. Like, it was just, they lost their minds. But back to the greatest. And I truly do mean the greatest of all time. Peter Pan and the Pirates. And of course, like I said before, it's based off of J.M. Barney's Peter Pan and Wendy. Which has been adapted and like changed by a bazillion times. Like, when I say this show is great, it's better than, like I said before, the... Disney animated movie is better than the um, the sequel that came out to that one. Like, it's just better in every single last way. It's not hokey. It's not racist. It's full of action and adventure. There's lightheartedness. Like, if you've ever been a fan of Peter Pan and you just ever wanted to be like a kid that never grows up, if you ever wanted to go to Neverland, like... This fulfilled your wish of what it would be like to live in, like, Neverland. And, you know, who doesn't want to be like a kid again? Who doesn't want to be young? Who doesn't want to be free? Who doesn't want to have to pay bills and deal with drama? Who wants to continue playing with their toys and never been told to stop playing with them because you have to grow up? You know, we've all been through that crap, you know? And it was the best. And Peter Pan is truly the best escapism there is, you know? I remember when I saw this cartoon first come out, I was really shocked and amazed how the animation looked. Like, it was very fluid, very good animation. It had that slight 80s feel to it, but a more modern 90s at that version time. 
you know, there was no more realism on people's faces. Except for this one episode. That was kind of freaky, but there's a reason for that. And so, like, I just remember just being in shock and awe. Because I remember watching, um, what was it? Like I said, the Disney animated movie. And they have a certain look to theirs that has, like that came from like the theater plays and stuff but of course peter pan has a different look as in the novels and stuff and but this one it completely changed what you would think of when you think of peter pan captain hook the darlings tinkerbell and also um the lost boys i've watched those tinkerbell movies eh, they're okay but i just wish they had peter and the rest of them in there but they're all right, you know what I'm saying? At least they gave Tinkerbell something to do. Other than me and pissed off all the time. In the first episode of this series, like, Captain Hook's not even the villain. He's in there, like, as a cameo, but it's just, like, a cameo. So I was really shocked when I saw that. I'm like, hey, how come Captain Hook isn't his first villain he fights in this show? Instead of this giant ice um, lord and everything. But then they did the recurring theme of having Hook be the primary villain throughout the entire series. And it got stale after a while. It was kind of like, okay, if you're gonna let us know that Peter has other enemies in Neverland, then Hook can't just be his primary one, you know? And they kind of overdid it with 65 episodes of so much Hook. Now first, let's talk about the designs of the characters. Cause like I said, they're a huge departure from what you're used to seeing in like Peter Pan. Let's start off with Peter Pan. Now, normally when we see Peter Pan, he's wearing some type of green leotard type outfit or like a leafy green outfit. And sometimes he has like blonde hair or brown hair. He has pointy elf ears. He has sometimes that little cap thing with a feather he wears. That's normally the depiction you'll see of Peter Pan, somebody who's like very tall and stuff like that. Which is also kind of weird. If Peter Pan's supposed to be a kid, how come in almost every adaption you see, he looks like a teenager? Even in the Disney one. For this series, however, he's shorter. He is a kid. And he's wearing a long brown outfit. And it's like a tattered outfit. His pants are like ripped and tattered to where they look like capris. He's wearing teeny tiny little brown boots. He has a tethered brown cape. He wears his knife dagger thing on his boot as opposed to like his belt like you see in other iterations. And his knife is extremely tiny. And another difference is he has long, shaggy, untamed hair that he keeps in a ponytail tied with a rope. I was shocked to see this. I'm just like, isn't he supposed to wear green? But the brown, for some reason, just works for this series. I don't know why. It just does. And the untamed hair, that's perfect. Kids hate combing and brushing their hair. It's like, because normally when you see him, his hair is very, very tame. It's very slick. It's pulled back. But with this one, it's just wild and just like, just like him, a wild, untamed person. Now, this version of Peter, just like in the other ones, he's very adventurous. In fact, he's too adventurous. He will literally put his friend's life in danger just for the sake of having fun. But he always rescues them. But there's been times where it's been so close that like he's, like his friends and himself have almost died. This one is extremely juvenile. He cannot read. He has a terrible memory, like in most iterations, but his memory is really bad sometimes in this one. He, his whole life is the thrill of an adventure, a thrill to have fun, the thrill to like not being told what to do by adults. Like this dude literally lives by his own rules and stuff. And he wouldn't always let Wendy boss him around like the mother figure that she does and other things. Well, this one is kind of, he's so defiant. And like I said before, he's just like a rebel and stuff. One interesting thing is that he clucks like a rooster. 
Like he'll just fly up in the air and just start like clucking and stuff. It's like his little call, which is in you see in other iterations as well, but you really see it in like this one. Tinkerbell. She had the hugest change of them all to the point where sometimes she doesn't even look recognizable. Like you can always look at Peter and sometimes you can kind of tell who's Peter even though he's wearing a brown outfit. But this Tinkerbell is completely different. Thankfully, she does get the talk in this one. It always bothered me how like the original Tinkerbell just tinkers. You know, she just makes noise and head movements. It's like her voice box has been like taken away or something like that. But yeah. This one is very, very, very mouthy. Like if you think Wendy preached him to death by being a mother figure, oh, wait until you see Tinkerbell. She's always telling Peter, don't do this, don't do that. We're gonna get hurt. Um, you're gonna call like catastrophe. Like just, just, just like don't, you know what I'm saying? And just like every other iteration, she hates Wendy so much <laughs> because that's the affection of Peter. But in this one, Peter and Wendy just have like a friendship relationship. Neither one of them falls in love with the other. Probably because it's a kid's cartoon. But yeah, this Tinkerbell, she knows everything there is to know about Neverland. And it's like she is just like very blunt and just like 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 a spitfire type person. Now, her design is completely different, like I said. Instead of her iconic green outfit, yellow skin, little puffy flowery boot, um, heel, um, I don't think, shoes that she wear, and kind of like bug-like wings and her blonde hair, this one got a complete redesign. This one is wearing a long pink dress, and she wears like a blue flower petal on her head as a hat and she has these huge butterfly type wings she's still short but instead of her magic being like gold pixie dust and this one is like pink also her hair is like reddish brown in this one now let's get to the darlings let's get to wendy darling gone is the tall height gone is the reddish brown hair gone is that blue dress nightgown thing she wore this one now wears a really cute pink dress and she wears kind of like white stockings and I think she, yeah, she wears like long white sleeves. And this one has short black hair. She has a kind of like a tiara crown made out of flowers. And in this one, she's just like she is in the other generation. She's more of a motherly figure, but she also likes to have fun with the guys and she loves pulling pranks and she loves pulling pranks on the pirates until of course the pirates start to like try to kill them and everything she is the voice of reason that's the tinkerbell and always tries to get peter to do the right thing but of course he doesn't want to listen but the lost boys they will at uh, times listen to her because she knows that even though it's cool to have fun and everything you gotta dial it back sometimes because at some point you're gonna get hurt and Peter's not always gonna be there to save people because there are a lot of threats in Neverland in this version. John Darling. Gone are his glass. Well, okay, well actually, let me, let me get to this part. So we're used to seeing John with glasses, a stovepipe hat, kind of like a top hat. And we're used to seeing him in his nightgown thing. And, you know, he's always the one that's like really clever and smart. In this version, gone are the glasses. Gone is his little top hat. Now he wears more of like a derby hat. And he's wearing regular like street clothes, which you'll see people in Britain wear back in the really old days. This version of John, he's still smart, but he likes to write in a journal and stuff. And he's very clever, but he also likes to get in trouble like most of them. But he's more reasonable than the other boys and stuff. Michael. Michael's pretty much the same as he is in the like animated uh, version. He's the only one who wears his pajamas. He wears blue ones. He has short brown hair, but gone is his teddy bear from the animated movies. And he's the most childish. He's the one who wants to go with Peter on all his adventures, but... 
you know, the other, um, but Wendy doesn't want him to, but Peter's all like, who cares, you know, just have fun and stuff. And so, yeah, he's pretty much the same as he always is. The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys have probably had, like, one also the biggest changes ever. In other iterations of Peter Pan adaptions, the Lost Boys, for some bizarre reason, can't fly. I've never understood why it's only Peter and the Darling kids that get to fly. But, yeah, in this version, every Lost Boy flies. Uh, for the most part, the Lost Boys wear identical clothes, um, kind of like a goat, um, kind of, but they're a little different. Um, they're just wearing like regular like kid street clothes that you would see back in the old days. But each Lost Boy has a distinct hat on their head in the shape of an animal. Now the Lost Boys, when they fight the pirates, they have swords instead of a dagger, but this sword is made out of wood, never wood. It's an enchanted wood that when it's damaged, it just regrows back. Nibs, he's Peter's second in command, and he wears a bear head for like a hat. Slightly. He's the third in command, but he wants to be second, and he has an eagle for a hat. And one interesting thing about Slightly is not only is he voiced by Scott Menville, but like uh, before he'll start like a sentence he'll always put his name in like i slightly think that we're in danger today or um let's see i slightly feel a little bit hungry like something like that it gets kind of old but it's like a little running gag sometimes it's cute you know what i'm saying the twins the twins in this one is interesting because one's black and the other one's latino so i don't know exactly how they're twins <laughs> And they're not mixed, like, you know, like, they're both mixed with that same race. They're, like, two separate, complete people, and they look completely different. Um, but I guess they're, like, really, really best friends, so that's why they call them twins. But they dress in identical shirts and pants, and they have leopard um, head as, like, a hat. And then there's Toodles. Toodles is the plump one. He is the one who loves to eat, and he's a little bit more juvenile. And a little bit more scared. He also has a panda for a head. And it's kind of weird. They give these kids like the heads of animals to put as like a hat. <laughs> and this was like a kid's cartoon. <laughs> now we get to the pirates. Mainly I'm only going to talk about Captain Hook. Because for the other pirates they're just there. Like Smitty is his second in command. Um, and I can't even think of the other one's names. But anyway, Hook. Hook has a little parrot named Long Tom on him, or Short Tom, something like that. Anyway, this hook, this hook is completely different than most hooks you see. Other hooks that you see in like other adaptions is more flamboyant. He has long flowing black hair or like a wig. Normally he wears like a red coat and he, of course he has his hook on his hand. He has a mustache and he kind of has this Victorian Valair to him, this like flair, this uh, flamboyancy. He's also a bit of a bumbling idiot when you see him in other iterations, especially in the Disney one, but he also has a mean streak to him in other iterations as well. And normally when he hears the crocodile and he hears the, the little clock inside him, he panics and freaks out and acts like a buffoon. Oh, no, 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 not in this version. Whew. They changed this dude and made him a boss. He's voiced by the legend Tim Curry, of all things. And he has this great sounding voice. He's always sounding like, my name is James T. Hook. Boy. Like, I just like love it when he talks like that. And he's always insulting, like, Peter Pan as he's, like, trying to best him and stuff. Gone is the silliness. This dude used to be an English gentleman. He used to work for the Navy. He has kind of like this short powder wig type hair. He's clean shaven. His hook is on his right hand. He now wears like a kind of like a Captain's English type black outfit with a long flowing cape. He still command of the Jolly Roger. But this dude loves his mom to death and always talking about it. He plays the um, harpsichord. I think that's what it's called. And this dude is not scared whatsoever of that alligator. 
He does not even tremble at the sound of a clock. He welcomes fear like a bride. He literally says that in a very special um, series finale episode, which I'll get to in a little bit. He is mean. He is ruthless. He is all about killing little kids, especially Peter Pan. The intro was something of amazement. Like it's these trumpets and brass instruments. They're just loud and they're just like playing like an orchestra. And it's just like, it really gets you pumped for the series. And it's just like, you know, your blood is just like, yeah, and stuff. And I just remember, I love the intro. It's well done, it's well made. The music is great. And it just really tells you what the show is going to be about. And it just gets you pumped. Like, I'm just pumped now just thinking about it. Now, just like with every iteration of Peter Pan, Peter Pan is the one who conjured up Neverland. He wished for it. Uh, in the old, like, storytellings, well, I think he fell out of a crib. He got lost. Tinkerbell found him. And then they flew around and he wished Neverland into existence. Now, in the animated movie, that's the whole two stars from the right or left or whatever and straight to Neverland. They the one who came up with that phrase, I believe. In this one, Neverland is connected to Peter and Peter is connected to Neverland. If something bad was to happen to Peter, then Neverland will cease to exist. There are many recurring characters in this. There are the mermaids like we always see in Peter Pan iteration. There's the fairy kingdom. There are the Native Americans. And this time they are not depicted as racist as they were in the Disney movie. <sighs> oh, Disney, what were you thinking? Now, these Native Americans are a little bit differently. We still have Tiger Lily. She is still the princess and she is very headstrong and very brave. Sometimes she will occasionally um, accompany Peter on some of his missions. And, but sometimes she kind of takes a back seat to her brother. Yeah, in this version, she has a brother. Her brother is called Too Hard to Hit. <laughs> Just think about that for a second. <laughs> but anyway, he's scrappy, he's young, he's adventurous, he's brave, he always wants to prove himself. And, you know, but I don't understand really why they gave her a brother. I mean, there was plenty of strong male leads in this and there's only three females so they could have left him out then there's their um dad i believe his name is big little panther and he is the leader of the native americans and he even knows like a little bit of like magic and this and that something i've always wondered how exactly did the native americans get to neverland and because uh, it's kind of like if and not only that, but the pirates and stuff. I can understand everybody else being like, you know, magical creatures going to Neverland. But I never understood how the Native Americans got there or even how the pirates. I think the pirates got there. Because, like, how did they get there? You can't swim to Neverland. You have to fly there in, like, outer space and stuff. That's something I liked about the sci-fi movie. Sci-fi Neverland movie. The way you get to Neverland is this, like, this magical orb created by the fairies. If you strike the orb, you go to like Neverland. But yeah, a lot of these um, episodes were very, very, very interesting. Like there's this little girl who lives in the moon and she takes care of the moon. And you know, she um, makes it rise and rotates and all this and help plans rotate around all this other stuff. And so Hook, something happened. I forget what happened. But something happens where if it's nightfall the entire time, then something interesting will happen. And so Hook used that to his advantage by luring, by grooming the um, girl in the moon. Peter, you know, has to rescue her and stuff like that. There's an episode where, like, I think Peter's shadow, like, um, detaches from him or some crap like that. And so he ends up stealing the shadows from the pirates because if you steal a person's shadow in this version, you can't walk straight and you have to walk on your hands. And so he does that to like piss off the pirates, but it backfires because all the shadows turn evil. And of course, some of the Lost Boys and Peter's shadow had this, uh, have been detached. So now they're turning evil. In the first episode really sets up what Peter's all about. 
it's like he has this jewel and he gives it to Wendy, which pisses Tinkerbell off because he gave it to her. Well, this jewel is no ordinary jewel. It belongs to like the Ice King and you're not supposed to say his name. If you say his name, he appears. So, of course, Tinkerbell keeps telling him over and over, hey, don't say his name. And Peter's like, I know, I know. But then he does it anyway. And here comes the Ice King. He's pissed. He hates Peter because Peter won't stop pissing him off and stealing his stuff. So he freezes like the entire like um tree house they live in and you know the animation in this is gorgeous it's gorgeous it's good old-fashioned hand-drawn animation and so you know tinkerbell frees everybody and then peter's all decided oh nobody's gonna do this to my home i'm gonna go to his home and steal myself another um jewel but when he steals that one it pretty much freezes all of neverland so basically, the Ice King dude, he makes like a replica of Peter in the ice form and it's evil and it goes to fight Peter because he wants to get the crystal back. Well, eventually, you know, in order to make the Ice King stop, Peter has to get back the crystal, which he eventually does, but doesn't want to. But he also doesn't want Neverland and everybody else to freeze to death. This show even introduces Jane Darling way before the Disney animated movie did. In this episode, Peter decides he wants to bring back some more Lost Boys, but instead he brings back Jane Darling. When he went back into like the real world, he kind of flew so fast he jumped forward into the future. And that's how he found Jane Darling. And so he's been gone for so long that when he comes back at super speed, he goes back into the past. He has now completely forgot all of his memories and he doesn't know who the lost boys are. And so there's this new girl and, you know, and people just trying to figure out why did Peter bring this girl back and stuff. And so, of course, Hook, he's using this to his advantage to um, since Peter's already like lost his memory. He pretty much brainwashes Peter into thinking he's a pirate. Well, in a way, you know, at some point, Peter gets his memory back and he saves the day and then he sends Jane back into the past. And there's a nice touching moment between her and Wendy. Um, I can't remember. It's been so long. I don't know if Wendy acknowledges that somehow she knows that's her daughter, but I don't know how she would know. You know what I'm saying? But I think they, they hint to it because, you know, the fans know because of the novels and stuff. Now, this version of Peter, he is voiced by James Martison. And this dude is legendary in voice acting. He was Bart Allen and Young Justice. You know, this dude has been like in a lot of stuff. Then there's the series finale. And this episode was, they went off on a dark note. It was dark from beginning, middle to end. So, Peter and the Lost Boys, they capture Hook. They well, first is Peter fighting Hook. And then they ambush him with the Lost Boys. And then they tie him up to a tree. Peter has decided he has had enough of Captain Hook. He is tired of playing around with him because Hook is no longer fun to him. It is now tend, um, time to end this game and end the life of Captain Hook. He has these bamboo sticks set up to like this device that will shoot out bamboo sticks at the tree. Now, this frightens the Lost Boys at first. Hook, being who he is, he has to think his way out of this, and that's what he does. He taunts Peter. He berates Peter in a way that really affects him. Instead of talking about how, like, he's just a stupid little boy, he tells Peter, you want to kill me? Fine, do it. That's when he says he welcomes death as a bride. He tells Peter that... Unlike you, I have lived a full life. I have been a child. I have been a teenager. I have been a man. I have been a gentleman. I have sailed the seas with the Navy. I have found love. I have had my heart broken. I have experienced a full life. Whereas you, Peter Pan, are just a silly little boy and you will never understand what it is truly like to be human. You will never truly understand what it is to be a man. You refuse to be a man, therefore you are pathetic. You, you are scared of being an adult. You quiver and shake like a little child, whereas he embraces 
the full potential of like being a man and this really affects peter to peter just flies away doesn't even finish um, trying to kill hook hook did this to buy himself some time so he can bust through the ropes and bust through him he does next thing you know peter is so upset that he takes like a little chalk and he draws like wrinkles all over his face and talking about he can be a man if he wants to he could wish it to happen and there it happens within seconds he turns himself into a man this is bad because when peter becomes an adult he loses all memories of him being a kid and ever being in neverland because neverland is connected to peter because of his wish to never grow up now that he has grown up and has forgotten Neverland, he no longer believes in magic. As a result, Neverland is slowly dying. The weather is going haywire. Um, it's just basically about to be an apocalypse. And so Peter wanders all around Neverland by himself. And as, the, and as it went from being springtime, it is now freezing cold winter and stuff. And there's a huge snowstorm. And, but this is the thing, Peter Pan has not done aging. He's slowly aging into that of an old man. By the time he gets gray and die, Neverland will no longer exist. And so Tinkerbell knows this and she tries her best to find Peter and reverse this. Hook finds out about this after capturing like the Lost Boys and stuff and he doesn't care if Neverland dies as long as he gets to kill Peter first. So he is like desperate looking for an older Peter Pan. And it's to the point where I believe Hook almost kills him and stuff. And now when Tinkerbell does find Peter Pan, he is now a decrepit old man. And this is when they use kind of that 80s animation for realism in the face. And it's disturbing. But of course, she gets Peter to start believing into magic again. And then, of course, Neverland quickly restores itself. Peter Youth is restored. And now it's back to playing around with Hook and stuff like that. And, you know, the series just ends. I wish this series would be released on DVD. I wish it was on streaming. Sadly, there is no trace of this. You can find a couple of episodes on YouTube. The, the entire series used to be uploaded to YouTube. But I guess like the people who was in charge of Fox or whatever, they made YouTube take it off, which doesn't make no sense because Fox Kids is no longer around and I don't know who owns the rights to them now. And so it's kind of like, you know, if you're not going to put this out on DVD, if you're not going to put this on streaming, just let it be on YouTube and let people upload it, man. Like stop being like so pissy for money and stuff, you know? But like I said before, this is truly the greatest Peter Pan animated adaption in the world. It is a lost treasure it is a lost masterpiece and it's sad that like a lot more people don't know about this especially younger kids because if they were to watch this they would love this series to death Alrighty, well i'll talk to y'all later bye